something that caught my eye this morning as I was browsing Twitter is that the new Batman film titled The Batman coming out in just a couple months now, directed by Matt Reeves, is going to be rated PG-13, much to the dismay of some fans of the franchise, including myself. We were hoping for a rated R film, much like the Joker movie from 2019, um, but it doesn't look like we'll be getting that. It says here, the Batman is officially rated PG-13 for strong violence, disturbing content, drug content, strong language, and some suggestive material. Um, so, you know, it's not the end of the world, but I guess it is slightly disappointing. That being said, as many people are pointing out on Twitter, you know, The Dark Knight's also PG-13, Batman Returns is PG-13, and those are both very dark movies themselves that are quite violent and gritty, et cetera. Um, so, you know, it's not the end of the world. This could still be a great, dark, gritty movie, um, but not going to lie, I was holding out hope for an R rating. What did you think, Zach? I typically just don't love movies that aren't rated R because I like the freedom that it gives directors to reflect reality and situations. You know, we talk about this all the time. Real life isn't rated PG-13. People say fuck when something big comes thrown at them. They're like, ah, fuck. That is America in 2022. That's, so, you know, if you can only drop the F-bomb three times in your movie before you're rated R, it just makes it feel antiquated. It doesn't have the same kind of sharpness, uh, especially if you're dealing with like a criminal underworld and everybody's just like, oh, gosh darn it. I still stubbed my toe like you know and obviously it's not going to be like that it's not going to be you know super cringy or whatever but to me that's what it always makes me think of it's like we want you to go all the way batman is you know supposed to be like a darker villain and you know after you've set people up with what you're willing to do with like a movie like the joker in the dc universe and actually make it kind of bold and stand on its own two feet and be different than the marvel schlock which is supposed to be designed for the family right you can make your own uh ambitious you know fincher inspired um, piece of cinema and you don't have to hold back all the way and dilute it um, that being said it, just because a movie is pg-13 doesn't mean it can't be good or it won't be good but it just typically means that they didn't let the director go all the way that they have to you know scale back on something because they wanted to be able to reach the widest market possible and all that kind of bullshit um, but yeah uh, not excited by this news but i'm still not like in a runoff ship or anything i, I still think it's going to be a good movie yeah, again, and as some people are pointing out, I'll pull up this article. Um, yeah, Batman Returns also rated PG-13, and I would be happy if The Batman is just as dark as Batman Returns, which is definitely one of the weirdest, grossest, most fucked up movies ever made as far as comic book genre goes. Uh, it's the definitely my favorite of the Batman franchise, along with the original Tim Burton films. Those are my favorite, and I'm hoping for a you know more gothic, dark, uh, kind of style in this one as well. Some of that film noir vibes. Um, obviously, Batman is a detective first and foremost. And I think that's something this film's finally going to put a spotlight on, unlike some of the previous ones. Um, but yeah, you know, it is it is disappointing, especially after the Suicide Squad also had that hard R rating. I really enjoyed that. Um, but, you know, it's hard to get too upset because, again, think about all the other good Batman movies exist that aren't rated R. You know, it's not like Batman has to be dropping the F-bomb every five seconds for the movie to be good. Uh, but yeah, definitely a little bit disappointing. It certainly ignited a bit of a debate as well online with some people, you know, really upset about this and, and some people not uh, as upset about it. A lot of people are pointing out that, you know, even though it's rated PG-13, the, the way it's described still sounds pretty damn R-rated. You know, strong, violent, disturbing content, drug content, strong language, and some suggestive material. You know, that sounds like an R-rated film. So we'll see. Maybe they just paid off the MPAA uh, and it's actually an R-rated film, but they just, you know, got that PG-13 rating in hopes that they could get some more families and shit like that in there. Well, it's funny I, you mentioned that. I When I was like in sixth grade, I did a book report on Nikki Six, the bass player from the Motley Crew. Yeah, I'll take the, all the dragging in the comment section. But anyway, I read his book called The Heroin Diaries. And one of the things that he uh, talks about in the book is how during the 80s, when everybody was trying to get the craziest shit possible on MTV, they would film these just fucking astronomically insane music videos. And they would put like, 30 topless chicks in them and like fucking them doing like lines of shit and all that kind of crazy stuff and then submit that as their first draft that way when they sent them the like edited down version it seemed way less uh crazy so who knows maybe they're playing those kinds of uh games with the studio system and the mpaa but yeah uh i'm hoping um that it's a damn good movie and that's all i really care about yeah, same. And I'm super excited about the direction this film is going in. Definitely inspired by Fincher movies, specifically Zo uh, not Zodiac Seven, from what I've heard. Um, and also, I was a fan of the the photos of the Riddler, which just dropped. Um, I can pull that up. But yeah, they're definitely going for like a Zodiac killer vibe. 
here. Uh, so I'm super excited for it. It looks really gritty. Here's the here's the costume of the Riddler, played by Paul Dano. Um, looks pretty grungy. Looks pretty dark to me. Again, the one thing I don't love about the Christopher Nolan Batman films is that I feel like Gotham City doesn't really feel so much like Gotham City. It just kind of feels like Chicago or New York or wherever they happen to be filming. Um, and that's why I prefer the Tim Burton films. They have that real like German expressionist style to them. They have those noir vibes that I love. Um, and Gotham City really feels like a dingy, crime-ridden place, uh, a kind of place where Batman would exist in. Um, and, and I think that they're going to go back to that with this new film. I'm super excited for it. And I'm a big fan of director Matt Reeves. Um, his first two Apes movies were fantastic. And he also directed the American remake of Let the Right One In, which is one of my favorite American horror films of the 21st century. And the cinematographer for that is returning for the Batman, which makes me so goddamn excited because I love the look of Let Me In. But yeah, overall, super excited for this film. Uh, although this is not going to lie, a little disappointing, like I said. Yeah, although uh, any disappointment that I have with the uh, rating of the film just is immediately compensated for by Paul Dano. Dude, I'm a big Paul Dano simp. I think he's one of the best young working actors. I think that he's one of the like great character actors of our time. Uh, you know, I, I loved him in Prisoners. I've loved him in a bunch of stuff. Obviously, he's amazing in There Will Be Blood, that kind of shit. Uh, and I think he's going to be able to get somewhere just fucking mean with this uh, performance. And I think it's going to be nasty. I think it's going to be fucked up. And I, and I think it's going to steal the show. The only thing that does give me a little bit of pause is that we've talked about this on the podcast before. Um, when there are too many villains in a movie, it kind of fucks it up because they don't get developed properly. And I'm worried about how the screen time is going to get split between Dano and Farrell, who's going to be playing the Penguin. But other than that, I think this movie is going to be amazing. And if they can find a balancing act to make both of those characters rock, then more power to them. Yeah, I'm hoping that works out as well. Uh, we'll see. You know, we'll be here to review it when it drops. Definitely excited for the film and I'm optimistic about it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, it could it could go the other way as well. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll bring you guys our thoughts on that movie when it drops. Super excited for it. Mm -hmm.